On today's episode of What the Hell Is That? We have the rifle in front of me. In front of you, in front of the camera. Which some of you might recognize from the distinctive two-piece stock, rear bolt handle that's bent forward as the Moss 36. This is the French bolt action rifle at the beginning of World War II. It was developed in the early 30s, late 20s to fire, or for the new at the time, 7.5 by 54 French round. Really good round. I've enjoyed shooting it out of this rifle. It's the only rifle I've ever shot it out of. You can get it uh, in like the Moss 49. There are a couple other rifles that shoot it. French rifles. But it's a good round, very similar to 308. Um, it's, I wouldn't recommend like seeking it out because it's a good round. Not that it, it sh you shouldn't or couldn't, but when you can just get 308, it's prolific and it's cheap. Just stick with 308. But what I wanted to talk about with this particular rifle, as you can probably tell, it's been sporterized with the cut down forend, uh, shortened barrel, and uh, just general demilitarization of it. Uh, it's got an added safety here, which is actually going to be the focus of the video because we're going to be getting rid of this troublesome little guy. The French never used a safety on their bolt action rifles. They believed in opening the bolt, charging it, holding down the last round, oh, holding the bolt over it on an empty chamber. That was your safety. So. I prefer the French way of thinking, opposed to when this was imported. The company that imported it is Golden State Arms in Pasadena, California. They imported a lot of different surplus rifles after World War II, uh, Enfields, Mausers, and 1903 Springfields. Well, I guess those weren't really imported so much as brought back. They were ours to begin with. But uh, they imported a lot of different arms, surplus arms after World War II. And some of them, because this was sporterized by Golden State, Arm, Golden State Arms, they're the ones that did the sporterization. So they, they had a series of these, so this is definitely not the only one of these out here. I'm sure that you could find another one if you really wanted it. And in all reality, they're not, they're not a high value gun. Maybe someday, someday they will be, maybe. But I really doubt it. I really doubt this will ever be what would be considered a high value gun. What we're going to address today, though, is the removal of this safety. And it's just, it's a pain in the butt. When you fire it, it tends to go back on, and sometimes it will just go off. I mean, it's a simple safety. You push it forward, and it blocks the hammer, or the hammer, the sear from moving. And you pull it back. And then, oh, let's get down into frame, it moves. So it's pretty simple. You'll see how that all works when I take it apart here. Uh, some interesting things about this rifle, I mean, kind of interesting. The original Moss 36 has got a 22 and 5 8 inch barrel or so. This, they cut it down to 17 inches, which, you know, if you were to do that with like a, like an 8mm Mauser or something, you're going to have a lot of muzzle blast and, and a lot of recoil from that. So, I mean, this is not a bad cartridge to do this with, but in the same stroke, 17 and a half inches with basically a full power rifle cartridge is still pretty short. Okay, I'm going to start disassembling this. First off, I'm going to take the shortened forend off which is just held in by this single single screw here. I mean, this is obviously not a military component. That That's, I don't know, that's just some screw. They probably bought it at a hardware store and turned it down on the end. And if you look, well, I guess my video is probably not quite good enough quality to see it, but you can actually see little, like, file marks and flats on it, like someone Someone did it by hand. So, I mean, hey, look, that's craftsmanship, kind of. But the butt stock, or the forend, just clips in like that. You can tell it's an original military forend because you've got that. 
And not only that, but you can see on the end here, where they filled with a uh, definitely not matching piece of wood. Let's see if I can get that in the light better. Ooh. Mm, not really, but you can still tell that is way not the right kind of wood to go in there, and the grain's not right. They just not not right at all. But hey, it works. If you look here, you can see. If you look here, you can see it says Moss, 1949, right there on the barrel shank. A. We don't know what that stands for for sure. But then you can also, if I rotate the rifle around. See right here where it says Santa Fe, oh, Santa Fe, model 1949, roll it to here, Golden State Arms Corporation, Pasadena, California. So you can't see that with the forehand on there. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is, like I said, it, it disassembles pretty Pretty simply, it's two screws, and this is the original military screw right here. You can tell because it's a much higher quality screw, honestly, which is funny because, you know, mill surplus is mill surplus, so. But it's way higher quality than that uh, hardware store screw that came out of the fore end. But the, the buttstock basically fits in there the same way. It uh, has couple little lips that go underneath the oh, shit. right under here underneath the magazine wall so and it's held in by a screw it's pretty simple now and that's all we had to do to take this thing apart and that's the most we're going to take it apart we don't need to take it apart any further to get rid of this stupid stupid safety it's ridiculous ridiculous let's zoom in here a little bit so we can get a better look of it just to see what it does. Okay, this is in the fire position. What's in the fire position? It allows the back of the trigger mechanism here to move down, which allows the firing pin to the striker to move forward. Now, when you slide it forward, it simply blocks that from moving down, and that's it. But as you can see, it moves really, really easily, and I'm sure that I could probably put something else in here that would tension it and it would stay and blah 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 because it's a lot easier for me to just take this pin out right here and just get rid of the stupid thing it wasn't on it to begin with and as this rifle is not ever really going to have any value as a sporter i might as well might as well just get rid of it i mean i won't get rid of it i'll keep that around in a bag somewhere and you know someone ever wants to put it back if in 150 years, maybe, the Santa Fe Model 1949 uh, Golden State Arms sporterized rifle becomes a high value commodity, well, at that point, I will uh, go ahead and have someone put it back. I guess I won't have someone put it back, but someone will put it back and they'll have a high value crappy safety. It's pretty simple. I just need to take a punch. I don't even really have to punch it out I don't think I think I can just push it out it seems pretty again they didn't I'm not I'm not trying to say anything bad about this company because I don't really know a lot about them a little bit but not a lot but there we go that's as simple as it is I mean now now there's this hole here I guess if you wanted you could put this pin back in there but then you have a pin that just wallows around inside there wallows around inside there um now, oh, time to put it back together. This is going to be as quick as it was taking it apart. Just slide your butt stock on there, slide your trigger guard in, put your screw in. I mean, really simple. And I'm being sure to use a hollow ground tip. Don't want to use a non hollow ground tip. You know, this is not a difficult, not a difficult job. And I doubt, I doubt that this will be really applicable to a lot of people who watch this video. But it is interesting to see a gun like this because although there are, I know there's some out there, I don't have any idea how many there are out there of these. And 
it is kind of an interesting just little moment in history when you think about it because there aren't a lot of American companies today uh, importing surplus rifles and chopping them up. I mean, even even when we just had this glut of Mosin Nagants that came in, where you could get a Mosin for a hundred bucks, you didn't see companies just instantly chopping them up and putting them on the market like, ah, eh, this is a worthwhile thing to do. So, I mean, you did, you did see some aftermarket stuff for them, you still do, but it wasn't like, oh, we're going to import uh, crates of these and then chop them up. But really quickly, I just kind of wanted to go over some differences between this and the original Moss. The original Moss weighed in at about eight and a quarter pounds. This weighs about seven and three eighths pounds. And the original length of the Moss was 40 and 3 16 inches long or so. This one is 36 and 7 eighths. So I mean it is substantially smaller and substantially lighter. And although it's you know kind of silly of this company to have chopped up these rifles to me and with my 2017 perspective, in the 50s these things weren't worth crap. So why not? It's a much handier rifle this way and dimensionally, weight-wise, length-wise, it's about the same as my uh, Bushmaster AR-15, which is uh, like an M4 style rifle. But just a quick over, you know, quick overlook of the rifle. But like I said, it's a nice rifle. The cartridge is really not that uh, powerful, so it's not got a lot of kick or muzzle blast. You can see. The step in the barrel here, yeah, it's an original military barrel, but the stock would have been much longer. Uh, it's still got the original military sight, which this one's bent. I, I may try to fix that, I don't know, I'm unsure. But anyway, in the future I'm sure I'll do a video shooting this rifle, show you what it does to some steel targets or something like that. But thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video, or at least it entertained you for some small amount of time, hit the like button. Thanks.